Well, hello, my name is Dr. Kent and welcome to GetChemistryHealth.com. Now in this video, I'm gonna work a few practice problems on how to calculate the atomic mass of an element given the abundance and the mass of the various isotopes. Now, if you haven't yet watched the video concerning this topic, I suggest you do that first before attempting these problems. And as always, you can go to GetChemistryHealth.com and print out a PDF worksheet of these exact problems so you can follow along with me as I work them. Okay, so let's go ahead and try the first problem. This says calculate the atomic mass of an element with two naturally occurring isotopes. The first one we're just gonna call X85, and it has an abundance of 72.15% and a mass of 84.9118 AMU, or atomic mass units. And the second isotope is X87 with an abundance of 27.85% and a mass of 86.9092 atomic mass units. And then it wants to know, well, what is this element? Okay, well, as we saw in our lesson, the way that we find the average atomic mass is we take the abundance of the first isotope times the mass of the first isotope plus the abundance of the second isotope times the mass of the second isotope, and we just add those together. And if we had three or four isotopes, well, we just do it three or four times. So let's take the abundance of x85 times the mass of x85. Now the first thing though to remember is whenever you use a percentage on a calculation, you have to go back and convert it into decimal form. So when you make a percentage, you multiply by 100. When you turn a percentage back into a decimal, you divide by 100. So this decimal is gonna move two places to the left. So that would be 0 0.7215 times the abundance of that isotope was 84.9118 AMU. And then we do it again for the second isotope. So 27.85% will become 0.2785 times the abundance 86.9092, 86.9092. Atomic mass units. So we're going to be doing a couple of different operations. First, we're going to multiply these two numbers, then we'll multiply these two numbers, and then we'll add them together. So remember in a calculation, whenever you're doing multiple operations, you want to keep at least one extra significant digit until you get to the very end. So the first operation is these four significant digits times these six. So we should have normally four, but we're going to keep one extra or a fifth one. So I get 61.263 AMU, but I'll mark the first, but, but I'll mark the fourth one though as just a reminder that it should really only have four. This one is four significant digits times six. So the answer should have four, but again, I'll keep one extra. So 24.204 atomic mass units but I'll mark that fourth one again, just to remind myself. So I, so I add them together and I get 85.467 AMU. Okay, well now we're adding. The law for significant digits when you're adding is different. You base off of the significant places. So this one was significant all the way out to my hundreds place. This number was significant all the way out to the hundreds place. So the answer can only go out to the hundredths place. So I would round that off and I would get 85.47 AMU. So that's the average atomic mass of our element. Well, the question was, what was this element? So I'll just pull up a copy of the periodic table here and let's see if we can find an element that's around 85.47. So which element do you see that it might be? Well, it looks like it must have been rubidium because its mass was 85.47. So our unknown element must be rubidium. Okay, problem number two says, chromium has the following isotopic masses and relative abundances. Determine the atomic mass of chromium out to two decimal places. So basically, what that means is it's telling me not to worry about the significant digits and just take everything to two decimal places. So that makes it a little bit easier on us. Now notice chromium's case, it has four different isotopes. So we have to do the same thing as last time, but instead of doing it twice for two isotopes, we'll do it four times for four isotopes. 
So abundance times mass plus abundance times mass plus abundance times mass plus abundance times mass. We'll do it four times. So let's just go ahead and get started. So 4.35%. How do I write that as a decimal? Now remember the decimal has to move two places. So I have to put a zero in here. So 4.35% as a decimal is 0 0.0435. And it's a very common mistake for students to only move at one place and make it 0.435. But 0.435 would be 43.5%. So make sure you move that decimal two places. So the abundance times the mass of the first isotope. So 49.9461 AMU plus the second isotope. So move the decimal two places. So 0 0.8379 times the isotopic mass 51.9405 AMU. And again, for our third isotope, so this percentage, so 9.50% becomes 0 0.0950 times the mass 52.9407 atomic mass units plus the fourth one. So 2.36% would be 0 0.0236 times that mass, 53.9389 AMU. Okay, let's go ahead and solve these out. And remember it says to do everything out to two decimal places. So this one gives me 2.17 AMU, plus the next one comes out to be 43.52 AMU, plus the next one comes out to be 5.03 AMU, plus the last one comes out to be 1.27 AMU. So I add those all together and I get 51.99 AMU. So that would be the average atomic mass of chromium. Now just real quickly, let's go back and evaluate our data and see if this number makes sense. Should the number be around 52? Well, we look here, and the bulk of it, 84%, was pretty close to 52, 51.94. And there was about 9.5% that was a little heavier than that, and another 2% that was a little heavier. So it should be around 51.94, but a little heavier, and it is. It's 51.99. And one last check that we could do is actually just pull out our periodic table and see what the actual mass is for chromium. So let's go over here and look. So chromium has a mass of 52.00, which is pretty close to 51.99, so our calculation must be correct. Well, hope you enjoyed this video on atomic mass calculations. In our next video, I'm going to work some more advanced versions where you're going to have to find the abundance or find the mass of some of the isotopes. So come back and join me here next time at getchemistryhelp.com. Thank you.